Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here tonight and welcome to Mayor James Mueller's State of the City Address. To start the evening, I would like to welcome the Honor Guard of the South Bend Fire and Police Departments for posting of the colors. Next, we welcome Council Members Sheila Nisgotsky and Karen White and the South Bend Youth Council to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And next, we'd like to welcome Rabbi Michael Friedland to provide an invocation. And let me just begin by thanking uh, Mayor Mueller and his administration for including uh, $5.8 million in the city budget for county partnerships for homelessness and mental health. This past Sunday um, at a Faith in Indiana community meeting, Deputy Chief of Staff Jordan Gathers, uh, representing the mayor, told us that the top, the top priorities for these funds are a low barrier intake center and a crisis response center. And I just wanna say thank you to the mayor for his use of leadership on this issue. It's, it's gonna make a positive impact for all the citizens and families in our fine city. So thank you. So let us pray. Source of life, we ask your blessings for Mayor James Mueller and his administration and the leaders of our city that they may administer all affairs of state fairly, of city fairly with courage and conviction, compassion and constancy. Creator of all flesh, bless the citizens of our city that we may forge a common bond, banishing hatred and bigotry and safeguarding the ideals and principles that exalt our nation. May our city of South Bend enable all of its citizens to achieve their highest potential. May we recognize and celebrate that each of us, each citizen, is unique. But in concert, we are capable of creating a masterful woven tapestry. Let us know the singularity of each voice, but also rejoice in the harmony of the collective choir. Let us grow to appreciate that we live in a community in which it is not important whom you love, but that you love. May the creative and innovative spirit that built this city renew our prosperity, and may all this city's affinity groups benefit from its bounty. With these blessings, O Holy One, surely we will be able to sing with the prophet, as the prophet Isaiah promised. In that day, this song shall be sung in the land of Judah. Ours is a mighty city. God makes victory our inner and outer wall. What do we say on that? Thank you, Rabbi Friedland. And next, we would like to welcome David Smith to provide a rendition of the song, Rise Up. You're broken down and tired of living life like a merry-go-round. And you can find your fighter, but I see it in you, so we're going to walk it out and move. 
mountains. We gon' walk it out and move mountains. And I'll rise up high like the day. I'll rise up in spite of the ache. I'll rise up and I'll do it a thousand times again. I'll rise up high like the waves. I'll rise up in spite of the ache. I'll rise up and I'll do it a thousand times again. For you, for you, For that we have each other, and for that we have each other. And I'll rise up high like the days, I'll rise up in spite of the age, I'll rise up and I'll do it a thousand times again. I'll rise up high like the days, I'll rise up in spite of the ache, I'll rise up and I'll do it a thousand times again. I'll rise up high like the waves, I'll rise up in spite of the ache, I'll rise up and I'll do it a thousand times again for you. Thank you, David, that was incredible. And next, I would like to introduce Common Council President Sharon McBride to provide some remarks. Good evening. I'm Sharon McBride, President of the Southern Common Council and Third District Representative. I have the distinct pleasure of introducing our mayor, James Mueller, who is the 33rd mayor for the city of South Bend, Indiana. Tonight, the mayor will give his second State of the City address. But first, I would like to thank and recognize the council members who are present tonight. First District Representative and Chair of the Committee of the Whole, Councilor Kenneth Lee, Second District Councilor Henry Davis, Jr., 4th District Representative, Councilor Troy Warner, who is unable to be here tonight, 5th District Representative, Councilor Eli Wax, 6th District Representative, Councilor Sheila Naskatsky, and Vice President of the Common Council, and the at-large members, Councilor Laura K. Hammond, Councilor Rachel Thomas Morgan, and Councilor Karen L. White. I am also happy that members of, of our Youth Council were able to join us and witness the State of the City Address this evening. It is great seeing our city coming together to, tonight. The residents, our business leaders, educational leaders, and community leaders that we are all here tonight. Thank you for your continued support of the city of South Bend. A special thank you to my mother who is here tonight who is always supportive of me. I would like to take the time to acknowledge anyone who suffered the effects of COVID, whether directly or indirectly. And Mayor Mueller's 20, 
21 State of the City Address, he stated, our city is no stranger to adversity and our resilience has prevailed once again. He further stated that he was proud of the way our city responded to the crisis of COVID-19 pandemic during the past year. No one could have foreseen what would be in store for us. Little did the mayor, our city, state, our national officials, or our world leaders predict how the pandemic would impact our lives in 2021, 2022, and beyond. Mayor Mueller further commented, but during a year of extreme challenges, we adapted and learned our strength. Again, our city, through the leadership of our mayor, met these, other, these and other challenges, knowing that our city always adapts to any challenge that comes our way. Mayor Mueller have taken his responsibilities very seriously. As mayor, he understood that the past two years were not only moments of extraordinary challenges for our city, but an opportunity to transcend our community into the future with unparalleled funding, such as the American Rescue Plan and major infrastructure improvements. We all have had made sacrifices during the pandemic, and our mayor is no exception. Mayor Mueller is so committed to our city that when he married his lovely wife, Kelly, he sacrificed his honeymoon. <laughs> mayor Mueller has an unprecedented vision for our city. Much has been accomplished since he was sworn into office on January 1, 2020. However, much remains. Therefore, it is my distinct honor to introduce you to the 33rd mayor of our city of South Bend, James Mueller, who will give his 2022 State of the City Address. Welcome, Mayor James Mueller. Well, thank you. Good evening. Thank you, President McBride, for the kind words and also uh, for reminding everyone, uh, and, and Kelly in particular, uh, <laughs> and we, we still have not had, had our honeymoons, but uh, this reminder is good. And, and of course, thank you to Kelly for being a patient and loving wife and, and uh, sharing me with the city and all of you. Uh, we've been fortunate, of course, to, to have three great uh, council presidents in the past three years. And Sharon, you, along with your leadership team, are off to a great start. And I'm excited to continue the city's progress working with you and the rest of the Common Council to transform South Bend and make it a home where everyone can thrive. Well, first, isn't this a great new civic venue for our community? We are so thankful for everyone who made it possible. First and foremost, the St. Joseph County Library, of course, under the leadership of, of now uh, retired uh, Deb Fuda. And of course, the, the Community Foundation under the leadership of Rose Meisner. The city is a proud and grateful partner on this project, and this space will continue to inspire for generations to come and bring us closer together. Thank you to David Smith uh, <laughs> for sharing your talents with us. Uh, for those of you who joined us uh, for Black History Month celebration at the Charles Black, uh, it was outstanding and, and we thought we'd bring him back to the state of the city. I don't know if he's gotten better or the acoustics in this venue are way better than Charles Black. <laughs> Maybe both. Thank you, Rabbi Friedland, for the invocation. Thank you, Council Members White and Nizgotsky and the members of the Youth Council who have joined us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And of course, thank you to the Honor Guard for posting the colors tonight. So members of Common Council, distinguished guests, city employees, residents, neighbors, it's so great to have you all join me in person tonight and to be able to gather without masks as I share the latest chapter of our story. Are you guys hearing an echo or is it just me? I don't know what to maybe bring this down a little bit. Nope, move it over here. All right, I'll move over here. <laughs> Is that better? All right. 
So first, I'm thrilled to report that the 2020 census results finally arrived late last year, and they confirmed what we all knew, that South Bend is a growing city once again. Our city grew faster than at any point since the 1950s before Studebaker closed. Our comeback decade also marked the first time in a century that South Bend grew faster than the county. Although new, yeah, although new life in our downtown, the East Bank and near campus brought some highly visible changes, progress spanned the entire city. Most of our neighborhoods shared in our city's growth a striking reversal from the decades before when most of our neighborhoods saw a decline. And our fastest growing neighborhood may surprise many casual observers. It's on the west side near the city cemetery. I am beyond relieved that after 712 days, our city's state of emergency due to COVID-19 ended on March 1st. Since then, cases have plummeted and life has felt the closest to normal in over two years. I want to give special thanks to our healthcare workers who quietly and diligently fought through the Omicron wave. While we all hope that's the last wave to cause significant strain on our healthcare systems, please get vaccinated and boosted if you haven't done so already. We need to do everything we can to prevent another wave from disrupting our lives and healthcare systems. But the toll has already been too high, with nearly 900 of our neighbors in St. Joseph County alone dead, and many more suffering long-term consequences from this terrible disease. I want to give special thanks to our essential workers who provided critical services for our residents no matter what challenge they faced. To the Common Council, thank you for approving premium pay for them as a small token of our gratitude for their dedicated service during extraordinary times. When I took office and stated that we were ready to navigate whatever macroeconomic headwinds came our way, I can assure you I had no idea what economic roller coaster was around the corner. Over the past two years, we've gone from historically low unemployment at 3.4% just before the pandemic to historically high unemployment above 15% during the shutdown, back now to historically low unemployment currently at 3.2%. That's nearly 13,000 jobs created over the past two years. The resilience of our economy has been remarkable, and our rapid recovery is exceeding all expectations, especially those from the early days of the pandemic. In fact, when we were, didn't know what was going to happen, we didn't know, uh, you know, we had no certainty about anything anymore. And in fact, our comeback and growth has been so fast that prices are now rising at the fastest rate in decades. There is no sugarcoating this. These price increases are placing real burdens on families and small businesses alike. Although I haven't seen inflation at these levels in my lifetime, this is not an unprecedented challenge. We have the tools to get our economy back on track. The Federal Reserve is taking action to stabilize prices, and as the pandemic further fades, our global supply chains will continue to recover. There can be no doubt, if we can emerge from the past two years stronger than ever, we can certainly power through this challenge too. We have more resources than before. Thanks to the American Rescue Plan, South Bend received just over $58 million to invest in transforming our community. With over 800 responses and in-person feedback, I am grateful to the city team, council members, and residents for working together to develop South Bend's plan for this generational investment. Although the past two years have been a wild ride, we've stayed on track and are now ready to seize this once in a generation opportunity to build South Bend that we aspire to be, a home where everyone can thrive. I am grateful 
and proud to lead a city team committed to excellence. Not just good enough, not great, but aspiring to be the best. In 2021, our talented teams competed with heavyweights from across the country and earned a number of national distinctions for their dedicated service to South Bend residents. To name a few, for the second year in a row, our innovation and technology team ensured our certification from Bloomberg Philanthropies as a What Works City, one of 55, for our use of data to improve services for residents. Our finance team once again earned the quote triple crown, comprised of three separate awards for excellence in financial reporting and budgeting from the Government Finance Officers Association. The team's strong fiscal management has also maintained our double A bond rating, even in the face of macroeconomic and fiscal uncertainty. Our venue parks and arts team was a gold medal finalist for excellence in park and recreation management, recognized by the American Academy for Parks and Recreation Administration and yeah, this is a mouth, this is a this is a mouthful here. Recognized by the American Academy for Park and Recreation Administration and the National Recreation and Park Association. Our zoning and planning team gained a gold designation from the National Soul Smart program for making our processes faster, easier, and more affordable for homes and businesses to go solar. This is a clear signal that South Bend is open for solar business. And if that's not enough, the team was also the 2021 winner of the prestigious Richard H. Dryhouse, Dreehouse Form Based Code Award, an annual prize for stellar writing and implementation of a city zoning code. Our fire, public works, and 911 teams earned the highest ISO fire rating of one, putting our fire service in the top 1% nationally. Our city team led and demonstrated excellence in many other areas, serving residents better and laying the foundation for future recognition. It is humbling to stand before you, sharing our city's accomplishments and plans for the future. They are made possible by our dedicated and talented city team and our many partners in the community who rise to the occasion and answer the call each and every time. We are committed to delivering a safe community for everyone Everyone deserves to feel safe and be safe in their home, in their neighborhood, and across the city. Yet, senseless gun violence tears this away from us. Last year, we had 121 shooting victims compared to 133 the year before. This, of course, is nothing to celebrate, even though the numbers are down. Too many of our kids are losing their lives, literally. Too many of our kids are ending up in prison or ending up dead. We are hopeful that last year's decrease means that we are recovering from the full fallout of the social distancing measures. We are encouraged that we had fewer shooting victims last year when other cities had more. Though we are not immune from national trends, we are not condemned to suffer their cruel fate either. We can and must choose a different path for ourselves. But we must strengthen our resolve. Our kids know, have, must know that this violence has no place in their lives or in South Bend, and we need all hands on deck to reach them. In the coming months, my team and I will be doing more to engage our youth. I had the opportunity to speak to our Youth Advisory Council recently. They're an impressive group, and I appreciate all of the work that Council Member White and other, other council members are doing to engage our youth. I'm also proud of the work our community initiatives team continues to do and the progress with our live and free grant program in its second year. This year, South Bend Alive selected 10 out of 58 applications, all focused on restorative justice and strengthening families. Since February, they have received two trainings, earning certificates of completion from Dr. Lori Nathan from the University of Notre Dame's Kroc Institute for Peace, as well as the Alive and Free Institute of San Francisco, California, led by Dr. Joseph Marshall, Jr. Combined, Alive grantees have served 390 youth and 243 adults so far this year and have partnered with local schools and community centers 
to spread hope and empowerment from the work that they do. Last year, our group violence intervention team served 498 people, placed 10 in jobs, and delivered 151 custom notifications to at-risk individuals. Though we often make adjustments, including a new GVI office at Goodwill, the core of our group violence reduction strategy remains the same. We offer help to the most at risk and provide opportunities for them to choose a better path. Unfortunately, too many continue to choose a path of violence and face the consequences of our criminal justice system. I'm proud of our police department for adopting best practices and leading in 21st century policing. Our officers aspire to be the very best and serve our community with dedication, pride, and bravery. Last year, SBPD took 603 illegal firearms off the street, worked 194 drug cases, and responded to 82,421 calls for service. <laughs> With our roughly 220 sworn officers working every day of the year around the clock, this work was done while generating fewer than one filed complaint per week from the community. Our job is about to become even more difficult because state leaders dismantled our permit system for concealed firearms. When this extreme short-sighted change goes into effect this summer, our officers will face more danger and will no longer have this crucial tool available to get illegal guns and violent offenders off our streets. We can and will continue to work to address violence through other means. But we also need common sense approaches to reduce the number of firearms ending up in the wrong hands. We need universal background checks and permits to carry. A permitless system may work in rural parts of our state, but for cities like South Bend, our state leaders have moved us in the wrong direction. Our goal, of course, is to prevent crime, not just respond to and solve crimes after the fact. We recently implemented ShotSpotter Connect, which analyzes crime patterns and guides our officers on missions across the city. Since this implementation, officers have completed, on average, 72 missions per day. Meanwhile, our Violent Crimes Unit now handles homicide investigations in the city as of October. We have closed seven out of 12 homicides since the change took effect. It gets even better. I, we appreciate the pause, but it gets even better. Of the remaining five, two have been presented for charges, and one has a suspect identified undergoing additional investigation. The investigation for the only open case without a suspect just started last week and is still very active. No matter how you cut the numbers, starting with a solvability rate of 100% is an impressive feat. And we hope to continue that streak with the, op the one open case remaining. I thank our investigators for, the, for their work and their stepping up uh, and making this transition successful. I know it was a lot of work, a lot of records, and uh, of course the timing. We, we thought it was gonna take effect at the beginning of the year, and then we learned that uh, we were actually gonna take over in October, not January 1st. So stepping up and having this record uh, you can't say enough about, about this feat and that team. Also, beginning this year, Michiana Crime Stoppers increased the reward paid out for tips, leading to an arrest on homicides from $1,000 to $2,500. In February, Crime Stoppers launched a new program, program called Victory Over Violence, which provides an automatic $1,000 reward if a tip leads to an arrest or solving any felony case that involves a firearm, such as shootings, armed robberies, felony firearm possession, and intimidation with a firearm. We are grateful to our partnership with Crime Stoppers, which continues to help us solve cases and deliver justice to victims. Council members, police leadership, representatives from GVI, and I recently traveled to Detroit to learn more about an initiative there called Project Greenlight. Following the visit and subsequent conversations with the city team and community leaders, I am convinced that South Bend needs a real-time
Crime Center. As we look to partner with businesses and residents to maximize its impact over time, I hope to have a pilot demonstration up and running by the end of the year. I'm looking at Chief. <laughs> We continue to adopt best practices and leadership in 21st century policing and we'll update the community on progress soon. Going forward, we will work with community leaders, advocates, sworn officers of all ranks, and civilian members of our department to hone our community policing efforts and outline how the community and our officers can collaborate and work together to solve local challenges and improve our city. I also look forward to the council's recommendation for the city's next civilian review director. Because it is critical that we get this right, we shouldn't rush to meet arbitrary deadlines. We have a leading police department committed to working with the community and getting better each and every day. And with fewer than one complaint filed from the community every week, we have time to find the right person to be the next director. Two years ago, we led and approved a bold contract with more competitive wages and benefits for our officers. And this helped avoid catastrophic shortages, especially when facing increasingly difficult work environment. We must act again this year. Others in the region have followed our lead since our last contract. And we must do everything we can to get back to full staffing within the next two years. Meanwhile, our strong financial position also enabled us to offer our firefighters the best wage and pension-based package in 20 years. Our fire team is working on renovating Station 8 to provide greater capacity, safer living quarters, and better space to house both our male and female firefighters. And thank you, Rabbi, you stole the thunder on this line. Uh, we are working with our county partners on establishing a crisis response center where residents can be treated for health, health issues rather than locked up in jail. And we're also collaborating with the county on a low barrier uh, intake center and other projects for our residents without housing. This year's budget includes 5.8 million as the, as the rabbi uh, mentioned for these partnerships. And we will look for and identify other, for, other funding sources if necessary to get these done. This year, South Bend will start receiving settlements from our opioid litigation that can be used to address drug, mental health, and other public health issues in our community. A safe community for everyone also means a clean, safe environment. Work continues to address lead in our homes with federal grants. The process has been frustrating for residents as well as our city team due to all the federal red tape. While we keep moving that forward, we will expand our efforts addressing lead with local dollars to speed up the pace of progress. <laughs> Seems to be a favorite with the council in the front row here. <laughs> After decades of questions and millions of dollars spent on testing, we recently received good news and finally have a path forward for LaSalle Park. There is no evidence of serious or imminent health risk at or emanating from LaSalle Park. The Environmental Protection Agency would like us to address a few things, which we will do this summer. And following this cleanup work, our park will be even cleaner going forward. And following that, we are committed to working with the community to rebuild the park better than before. My administration is also tackling some of the worst eyesores in South Bend. This summer, we hope to take possession of the former Drury's Brewery site and begin demolition this fall. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we'll work to hold the property owner accountable for allowing this building to fall into such a state of disarray. And in a matter of weeks, the Environmental Protection Agency plans to begin demolition and remediation of the old Wilson shirt factory on Sample Street.
We must continue to lay the foundation for a stronger future by making necessary improvements to our city's infrastructure. That includes our streets, lights, and other neighborhood infrastructure, in addition to our digital infrastructure and sewer and water systems. Unfortunately, funding sources for critical infrastructure have struggled to keep up with our needs over the years. Inheriting a backlog and mounting infrastructure debt, I have prioritized these long-term investments. And I am thrilled and thankful our council has as well. We are in the middle of a three-year plan to invest $25 million rebuilding our streets. By the end of next year, failed streets will be repaired and the bar will be raised equitably across the city within every neighborhood. Last year, we paved just under 50 miles and performed maintenance on another 78 miles. We plan, plan all right. Street repair. <laughs> we plan to work on roughly 130 miles again this year, but because of higher price, prices and price increases, we will need additional dollars to stay on track with this plan. We can and we must stay on track. I, along with our public works and finance teams, will work with our council members to get this done in the coming weeks. Work is already underway converting all of our streetlights to LEDs. The 3,000 city-owned lights are mostly completed, and Indiana Michigan Power will begin upgrading its 9,000 lights in a matter of weeks and will finish by this fall. <laughs> These upgrades will improve visibility, save money, conserve energy, enough to power roughly 200 homes for a year, and reduce light out outages with these longer-lasting LEDs. But wait, there's more. And once this conversion finishes, we will identify remaining lighting gaps in neighborhoods and develop a plan to address them. <laughs> if there was any doubt about the necessity of digital connectivity to thrive in the 21st century economy, the past two years provided further, further underscored and the urgency to close the digital divide. Our innovation and technology team is working to triple the city's open Wi-Fi coverage over the next two years and is charting a path to expand broadband service. We were proud to host a national municipal broadband conference with Next Century Cities and Pew Charitable Trust a few weeks ago. We are also proud to partner with South Bend Schools on Citywide Classroom, which provides free at-home Comcast internet service or mobile Wi-Fi hotspots for over 4,200 students, 1,100 21st century scholars, and 300 in district employees. Now you can applaud. <laughs> Our legal and public works teams developed and negotiated a new, better long-term control plan for sewer overflows into the St. Joseph River. Our new plan will save ratepayers $437 million and reduce E. coli discharges by an additional 12% over the original plan. You heard that right. We now have a vastly cheaper plan that is also better for the environment. This is an extraordinary accomplishment. At the beginning of the pandemic, I instituted a moratorium on water shutoffs that lasted two years. With the end of the emergency declaration and the worst behind us, we are returning to normal operations. But that doesn't mean we're going back to business as usual. Access to water is a basic need. We cannot be an agent of cruelty and cut off access if residents are making good faith efforts to stay current on their utility bill. That's why we're reforming our policy for shutoffs going forward. When they resume this summer, our new policy will ensure shutoffs are a last resort and used only to prevent abuse. We are a generous and compassionate community. This reform is in line with our values. I'm proud of our utilities team for questioning habit and finding a better way to serve our residents.
In a similar vein, we used American Rescue Plan dollars in March for a one-time forgiveness of unpaid utility bills, providing a clean slate to residents who had fallen behind during the pandemic. In all, 4,957 households received an average of $631 of relief. I feel like this is, and wait, there's more. <laughs> and as part of the comprehensive utility rate package approved by council last year, we expanded the utility assistance program to provide up to $25 per month reduction in utility bills for qualifying families. Because of this program, our families in the greatest need saw a net decrease in their utility bills this year. Going forward, this program is critical to prevent families from falling further behind and having to choose among basic needs. Our public works team is also working with council members to update the fee and cost structure for new utility connections. We want to facilitate infill development and housing that can tap into existing infrastructure while ensuring that new developments that need new infrastructure to connect are paying their fair share to join our utility system. This seemingly small common sense policy change will have an enormous impact. Once it goes into effect, new housing project in neighborhoods across the city will be easier to finance and build. Over the last year, we've turned the, the economic downturn from the pandemic into an upswing that has expanded opportunities for residents, raised incomes, and reduced poverty. Along with the greatest population growth in 60 years, we've seen transformational projects begin in our community that will change its light, landscape for generations. Our community investment team spurred just under $80 million in private investment in 2021 with tax abatements, loans, and facade grant programs, including support for Cloud Walking Collective, Early Bird, Trace Mangos, and many more. More and more large projects are moving forward without any public support, especially near Notre Dame. This is great news, and we hope the gaps to make big projects happen continue to shrink over time as the city grows. Our region was also selected to receive the maximum award of $50 million from the state of Indiana's Ready program to build quality of place and to attract and retain residents. We look forward to working with our regional partners to select high quality transformational projects that will spur further investment in South Bend and Elkhart and everyone in between. <laughs> We're regionalists. <laughs> We were short workers before the pandemic, and these shortages are even more apparent than ever before during our rapid recovery. Our local businesses are ready to grow. Outside businesses are ready to relocate to our region. If only, if only we can provide more skilled workers. That's why we focus on providing certifications that can help people gain skills to fill positions of need in our community. Through our Upskill South Bend program, We'll cover the cost of certifications in healthcare and technology fields to help our employers fill vacancies and help our residents advance their careers. We've also refocused our Pathways program and we'll be partnering with the Purdue Manufacturing Extension Project to offer training for careers in advanced manufacturing and cybersecurity. And for those looking for a field, cybersecurity has a zero unemployment rate. So that's a hot field to get in. The shortage of workers is also why our team has made attracting new residents a priority to build on our population growth over the last decade. Our city must be a place that is welcoming for all who want, their build their, who want to build their lives here and call South Bend home. I am proud that South Bend is an inclusive city that welcomes new residents and embraces diversity. I'm also proud of United Religious Community and Catholic Charities for hosting more than 60 refugees from Afghanistan. And we look forward to welcoming Ukrainians once the federal government finalizes its immigration guidance. We are a nation of immigrants, we are a city of immigrants, and this is what powered us into a world superpower and our city when we were world fame. I think back to coming from uh, Germany and Ireland 
and what they faced crossing the Atlantic and making their way here to, to uh, pursue their dreams and to make a is, uh, you know, as We're also in the middle of celebrating the 100th birthday of the Morris. This summer, renovation to the venue will begin and follow an aggressive timetable for completion by fall. Where is Aaron? I hope he's, we're gonna be on track, right? So if you have the first show booking in September, is it September or October is the first show? October 1st, if you have the first booking, uh, you know, you, you may want to be flexible with your plans, but we, we're going to stay on schedule and make it happen. Large <laughs> scale changes to the block. Just north of the Morris, recently announced, was Beacon Health System, an ambitious investment in Memorial Hospital to build a 10 story tower, adding more than 500 new jobs and $230 million of investment. We are grateful to see this reinvestment in the South Bend, and we look forward to working with Beacon to fill in the missing pieces between the hospital and the rest of downtown. It's impossible to miss on the skyline our neighbors to the Southwest, the Pokagon Band of Potawatomi. They've been busy building a 23-story hotel at near Four Winds Casino, which will serve as an attraction for the entire region. And near where I grew up, there's excitement around our newest residents, Seymour, Maximus, Wyatt, and Kellen, and the transformation of Potawatomi Zoo. For those who don't know, those are the giraffes that, that just came. Those are the names of the giraffes. <laughs> Investments in public spaces have been a priority for the city team, and we're excited to be nearing completion of the first phase of the Coal Line Trail. We are also beyond thrilled that Notre Dame hydroelectric project is nearing completion. I don't know if we have any folks from Notre Dame here, but I know uh, they can share in, in the joy and, and relief that this project is finally about to get across the finish line. And once we, once we follow, when we follow that, we'll begin to rebuild Sites Park and the connected trails on the East Bank. I will say, this, when, I, when I went to run for mayor, this was, this was scheduled to be done uh, th at the end of that year. So think about that for how much time has passed. But we're all grateful that we're getting there. And with the help of our community, we're reimagining one of our most beloved community centers. On May 12th, a conceptual design will be unveiled for a new Martin Luther King Dream Center. With $11 million already committed, we will work to find partners to help close the gap to make this generational investment a reality. We'll continue to explore programming partners, including the potential for a financial empowerment center to help residents build financial wealth, health and wealth. Supporting the stabilization of existing housing and the construction of new housing units remains a top priority. Thanks to the American Rescue Plan, our team will expand on successful programs and find new ways to support safe, affordable housing for all. Part of our housing effort includes the expansion of our home repair program, which supports homeowners looking to make improvements to their homes like new roofs, new HVAC. Additionally, we'll be working with community developers to support new construction in South Bend. And as we work to re-envision the Rabbi Shulman neighborhood, our partnership with the South Bend Housing Authority has never been stronger. This transformational project will provide 300 affordable housing units, 
Dr. Lambert is leading a generational investment in our public housing that will serve our community for decades. <laughs> Additionally, the city is supporting tax credit applications for projects that bring an additional 120 affordable housing units to South Bend. And finally, we are proud of our partnership with South Bend Heritage and others to build permanent supporting housing units. 20, 20, 22 units will open at Hope Avenue Homes later this spring. And there's more. The team is working with the state on additional projects that could bring many, many more units online in the coming years. Housing is a long-term issue that can't be solved overnight, but I'm confident we can make progress together to ensure safe housing for all residents of South Bend and provide new space for new residents as well. Our planning team has been busy completing four neighborhood plans in the past year. With one this year and two next year, much of the city will have an up-to-date plan for the future. The entire city will be part of the comprehensive plan process that will kick off later this year. I encourage our community to get involved in this opportunity to help set the vision for our city for the next 20 years. And because of the rapid pace of planning and the number of great opportunities available to us, we will work with council members to identify additional financing for projects in neighborhoods across the city. <laughs> council members know what financing means. That's why we're going to work together to get it done. To be successful into the future, we must do more to support our kids from cradle to career. The path of opportunity begins at the very start of their education. On that, we are excited that our partnership with United Way will create 250 new seats of high quality, affordable, early childhood education. With the Southeast Neighborhood Center opening later this year and planning for another center in the far northwest neighborhood well underway, we are now actively exploring a third potential site. And this is on top of more than 110 pre-K spots that the Empowerment Zone added this year and the 120 additional pre-K students that South Bend Schools is preparing for in the upcoming school year. We're also working with South Bend Schools on establishing a career center that will connect students with more opportunities to develop valuable skills. And we hope to have more to share on that soon. <laughs> we need to strengthen our K through 12 education system as South Bend Schools continues to address many of its long-standing operational challenges through right-sizing the district and other necessary adjustments they are able to focus more and more on their core mission of educating our kids. We hope our state leaders continue to invest and provide the resources needed for a strong public school system. We hope that Indiana will continue to focus on educating and elevating all of our children, supporting both teachers and parents, rather than pitting them against each other. While setting our kids up for success is vital, we haven't forgotten about our older residents. Last year, South Bend became recognized as an age-friendly community by AARP. And we are partnering with, with the county to make, continue making progress on that. Part of being an age-friendly community is having recreational opportunities for every generation. Our venue parks and arts team provides many opportunities for all ages and will repair athletic courts across the city throughout 18 parks, 50 basketball, pickleball, and tennis courts in all. Our sustainability team has been busy administering the first cohort of the Energy Savings and Solar Grant, which provides funding to local nonprofits to make energy efficient improvements and to go solar. So far, 15 organizations have been selected and we're hopeful that this program will get 200 kilowatts of rooftop solar installed. <laughs> we, 
Later this year, we're excited to launch an opportunity fund that will assist new and emerging businesses which face barriers to getting started, particularly those members from underrepresented groups. And last night, our council unanimously approved celebrating Juneteenth as an official city holiday. It is critical that we recognize our shared history and celebrate the end of this dark chapter in our nation's history, especially as we recommit to furthering justice in our time. It's not just what we do, but it's how we do things. I'm proud of the collaborative spirit embraced by our city team and Common Council. This is why we have so many great partnerships to highlight tonight. This is how we build a better community. In a media landscape of increasing information bubbles, we need more bridge builders to connect us together. In a time with, during which democracy is under attack around the world, we need to embrace compromise and seek common ground with each other. When residents need a city service, we don't ask for political affiliation or ideology. We represent and serve all residents. While our city elected officials share a diverse set of political views, we don't let that get in the way of making progress for our community together. We would be in much better place if higher levels of government adopted this same approach. Again, we serve all residents and we look for ways to move forward together. It is an honor to serve as your 33rd mayor and a true privilege to serve during this time of generational transformation. For as long as I'm mayor, I will look to build bridges within our community and outside of it. And South Bend will be a willing and open partner towards progress. If we continue down this path, we will transform South Bend into a home where everyone can thrive. South Bend will be world famed once again. Thank you once again to all of our community partners for the work you do with and for us. To the greater South Bend community, please join us to make every neighborhood safe and vibrant. Please join us to increase opportunities and build shared growth. Please join us as we make South Bend a fair and more just city. Please join us to make South Bend a home where everyone can thrive. May God bless our sworn firefighters and officers. May God continue to bless the city of South Bend. Thank you and good night.